My name is Jens Mjør Pedersen. I'm a professor at Aalborg University, where I'm heading the cybersecurity research group. And then I'm also a coach for the Danish national cybersecurity team, which won the European Cybersecurity Challenge in 2022. And my talk is about gamification and capture the flag and how we can use capture the capture the flag setup in order to make even better and more motivated uh, cybersecurity training uh, education for both students, uh, continuing ed education, education for youngsters, so it can be used for all kind of target groups. The idea with capture the flag is that you are finding, um, you are solving puzzles and you are getting flags when you solve a puzzle. And those puzzles can be in different categories. It can, for example, be in a web security where you have to find a vulnerability that makes, you, makes it possible to access hidden information on the website. It could be in cryptography where you have to be able to decrypt something that otherwise shouldn't be possible to decrypt. Or it can be forensics where you have to find information about people or systems. And when you find that information, you get a flag and that flag will give you the points. So every time you solve one of these challenges or puzzles, you get a flag and the flag will give you points. Um, it's very much used in competition and it's very much used in cybersecurity competitions because it's really engaging. And this is a gamification element where you are getting points for what you do is uh, very motivating to work with. And I find it also very interesting how we can use it in a teaching and learning context. And uh, the teaching learning context is a little bit different from the competition context because in a competition context, you often want to make uh, the challenges difficult. You have to use more tools and more methods uh, in order to, to, uh, to solve it and get the flag. And it's like the more complex it becomes, the more fun the challenge is also. But when we are using it in a teaching and learning context, uh, I like to build it up slowly. So maybe in the beginning, if it is for people without knowledge in cybersecurity, I would uh, have a first challenge without any, any tooling required. That could, for example, be that uh, we have created a website in a, of course, closed, secure environment where you can access it. And uh, this website has some vulnerability that by changing a number or by changing something in the URL that you can guess, you find information that you shouldn't be able to access. That's one example of a simple challenge that most people, even without any IT skills or cybersecurity skills, would be able to do. Uh, then we can build on top from there. We can introduce more tools. That could be a tool for password cracking. That could be a tool for actually automatically searching websites for information. And then we gradually build up with different tools. And you can say that for every challenge, you also learn a new tool or a new method. Um, setting it up in a, key, in a teaching context, uh, for example, we have been doing some one-day courses for companies. I also feel that it works really well by structuring the day with different themes. And in every theme, you would, for example, start with um, an introduction to a vulnerability that could be cross-site scripting. And we would go over maybe using 10-15 minutes. We would be going over what is cross-site scripting, different kind of cross-site scripting, how does it work. And then we will let the participants do one or more challenges in order to get the hands-on experience. And after they get the hands-on experience, then we can move on and we can discuss how can you avoid this vulnerability because we don't really want to educate hackers. But having the hacker mindset and knowing how the hacker works is just a really good way of also learning how to, uh, how to work with the vulnerabilities and how to avoid them. What I also found works really well in that context is that when we, we come to the challenge part, so after going through the vulnerabilities and when actually solving challenges, um, we would often have three challenges which are different, uh, uh, two which would be very similar to each other. We call them sister challenges. So it's a basic concept, but it's, you can say the context is different or the storyline around them is different, but essentially you have to use the same way of thinking and the same tools and then maybe one that is more difficult. Uh, then I would go through one of the challenges in a demo way, uh, show it, and the, the students or participants could follow it, could solve it together with me. Uh, in the next step, they have to do it on their own, but because it's the same tool they have to use, it will be quite um, not easy, but uh, they will know what to do. And then for the last one could be for those who are a little bit faster, and, uh, and maybe no more beforehand. And that could be a similar challenge, but with some added requirements or that you need to do a little bit more. 
Um, what we have developed at Alba University that we are using for, for this uh, setup is that we have made a platform which, is, which makes it possible to automatically spin up labs in a closed and secure environment. So uh, the participant, when, when I set it up as a teacher, I would say I want these challenges included. We have a catalog of, I think, around 500 different challenges in all categories and all difficulty levels. And I would check out, I want these uh, 10 included today. Then when the participants are signing up, every participant is getting his own lab. He is getting a Kelly Linux, like a Linux with a lot of hacker tools uh, in a virtual machine that he can access through a browser. And from that virtual machine and the browser, he can also, or she can also access the different vulnerable machines that we have set up uh, with those challenges. So it's all automated, it's all working through a browser, and it's all happening in a, in a secure environment. So uh, there is really no danger of uh, hacking something wrong, or there is no danger of doing some damage on real world systems because you are kept in the, in the secure lab. Um, we have been using this in many different contexts, everything from uh, high schools, uh, for students seeing cybersecurity for the first time, to continuing education of professionals, till training the, the Danish national cybersecurity team, and, uh, and the competition leading to taking the, the national team. And we have really good experiences. If there should be one takeaway point, it is a gamification. It's a really, really strong way of working because it is highly engaging. Uh, and with the right challenges made with learning in mind and having the right progression. It's also a very strong tool for learning. So you can combine the high motivation from the gamification with the very good learning and hands-on. And I really recommend to use it for any kind of education and cybersecurity.